Okay, so tutorial about uh, render settings, just the basics, and uh, using the Redshift render window to just do a still frame render and save it. And we'll also look at uh, how to use the camera tag in Redshift. Okay, so uh, I have this uh, little scene, my little hornet, uh, kind of box model the hornet here. And here's the um, IPR view in, in Redshift. So I like things about this. There are things I'm not crazy about. Um, so if you're like, hey, this looks a little dark, uh, some of that's intentional. I want to look at uh, some ways I can address that um, in the settings here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And before I even get into the final, the render settings, now, um, and right now I'm just telling it to render the whole entire uh, window here, whatever's active, and I've turned off the uh, <clears throat> the overlay that shows where the frame is. Because what I want to do is use Redshift's window, um, kind of its render view, uh, interactively as, as I go along here. So um, I'm going to go up to Window and just choose the Redshift Render view. So and this is a little confusing because up underneath render, there's the picture viewer. Now the picture viewer is the um, <clears throat> Cinema 4D uh, viewer, and that's what we use for animations, and it's, it's uh, Cinema 4D's kind of default thing. Then we have the Redshift uh, render view, which is exactly what I'm going to open up here, right? I can also get to it here, though. In fact, I'm going to do it just from the window, <clears throat> and I'll pull this new window up, right? And uh, I have these some settings here. So I'm going to take this um, because I want to. I have got enough screen. I'm here on my 27 inch iMac. Um, if you're using a laptop or something smaller, right, you can just keep it here uh, and just use this on top. But I'm going to dock this. So I just I clicked on uh, this little, little three lines here. And you can see it's highlighting in various places. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm just going to dock it here uh, on the side into this little interface, right? So I can just move back and forth. <clears throat> um, so if I do need to move anything around, I have a view, you know, an editor view that I can use. But then now I have this window, and you can see right now it's, it has a square set up here. So let's go into the render settings first off. And if I just click on this, you can see that... Um, now if, you're, if you uh, haven't changed this or haven't done anything with this before, your setup might be uh, 1270 by 720. Um, so if I were to close this, I'm not sure if that will just go back and forth here. Um, so in fact, I can just see it a little bit. I can see the, the overlay for that. Um, but this is where those settings um, for the output are found, right? And I modified this. I wanted to do a kind of a square composition. I guess it was kind of based on the, you know, I'm using this hexagonal shape. So it felt like square was a better composition. You should make a decision on whatever you think works best for you. Um, uh, for the assignment, I haven't set up uh, a requirement of what the size is, just something reasonable, right? So a thousand by a thousand. Um, the other thing here, instead of rendering an animation, I'm just going to do the current frame. So I had set this up to do an animation before. <clears throat> um, that doesn't really matter for kind of what we're going to do here, but I just, for those uh, that, you know, if you just want to know uh, the manual setting, if we were to do an animation, we tell it how many frames we want to do. Um, yours probably says current frame right out of the gate. <clears throat> so I'm going to leave that there. Um, let's see, is there anything else? I'm not going to worry about uh, saving. <coughs> Excuse me. A um, little congested this morning. Um, yeah, and then of course I have the red shift uh, settings. Yours will look like this. Um, that's all I really need to do. Uh, there is a denoise option here. We haven't really talked about that in class. I wouldn't worry about it. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I think the main thing is just making sure that you have the output size that you want, right? And more importantly, whatever that aspect ratio is. All right. So let's go back to the Redshift render view. And in here we have uh, a couple little buttons. I'm not going to cover all of them. The first one would be to do the final 
full quality render, which we'll do here in a little bit. The second one is the equivalent of doing this. So I'm going to just press that little play button and you'll see I get my little, let me turn off something that was turned on there. All right, <clears throat> we'll come back to that. So um, this is a slightly higher quality, uh, full resolution version of what's going on here. Um, in this render view. The nice thing about this is just, um, uh, I think it's a little quicker. I can also control the size. So instead of having, you know, really large renders um, in that space, right? <clears throat> I can uh, scale that down to um, speed up things as I'm working. So I have a render view and then I have a model view as I'm going along. So um, I think those are, that's helpful sometimes. Just gonna scale it back up to 100%. Okay, so there's the interactive view uh, render, and then um, there's the final render. So if I click on the little uh, film clapboard here, down at the bottom, you can see it's preparing, it's building this cloud. So this is um, sampling where all the lighting information is going in the scene, and now you can see like a little bucket has appeared. Um, uh, on the screen. So this is going to start rendering at full quality. Uh, um, like the, the anti-aliasing, the sampling is set high. And obviously it's going to take a little bit longer, right? It's not meant to be interactive. This is supposed to be your final picture um, that gets taken. So I'm not going to wait for this to go all the way around and finish this all out, but just know that when it's done, I can do file, save image as, <clears throat> and save it as a PNG. Just you know, just as a, as a regular file that you're going to turn in for the assignment. Okay, so um, I'm just going to stop the uh, uh, that final render. Just click on it and stop there. So, so that's the first part. The using the Redshift render view, um, there are a lot of uh, great things about this. Um, we can do crops, so I could turn on the little cropped area, and you know, if I want to be quick about it and see what's happening. I can do a final quality render or an interactive render right into that section and, and it's very quick, right, with um, how that's functioning. Um, so I'll just click on that, turn off the crop here. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we can also uh, save. Uh, we can take a snapshot. So if I'm tweaking the render settings and I want to see what this version looks like with a setting and then the next one and the next one, I can, if I uh, click on this, it will load an image down here um, and it will keep loading images down here so I can click on them and compare them to um, other versions, right? So I'm just gonna uh, delete that, and get it out of there. Okay. <clears throat> and um, let's see, is there anything else? I think that's it for the, the render view with the exception of something we're gonna look at here in a minute. So before I do that, um, let's go in uh, over to my camera now and uh, there's lots of different settings for this in fact I'm going to change one because this is what your default I think looks like on your camera um, before I get into this I'm going to just go up to the camera right click to get to all my little tags over here and there's a camera tag um, that we're looking for and it's the redshift the RS right the redshift camera I'm going to add that and it puts this tag here um, that we're going to use. <clears throat> we're going to look at this from two different uh, ways where we can use it here in the attribute and then when we can use some of the attributes that we see here just changing it over in the render view. You'll see where we get to. So the first thing I want, to, I always, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not that I want to be photo real uh, in the things I do, but I like referencing the camera even if I'm not trying to make something um, photo real. So I, I want it to have that element that I've taken a picture. Obviously, you know, if you're doing a cartoon look or something, maybe it's not as applicable, or maybe you want to fuse those things together. But, um, but let's just play along. I want some kind of photographic feel to this. Um, if my uh, little hornet creature is the scale of an actual bee, um, there would probably be a lot of blurring in the background. There would be a shallow depth of field just because of the nature of how optics work with a camera and, and tiny objects and close-up 
um, when we're photographing things. So I want to have that kind of uh, background. Uh, it's blurry. Plus, I just don't, I want the, you know, some visual interest in the back, but I don't want it to be the focus. I want the focus to be the thing. I mean, in essence, this is a portrait photograph, right? So I want the, the hornet to be the thing that I'm focusing on. Okay, so that's the why. So how about the how? So the depth of field is uh, controlled through this bokeh effect. It's the name used to con uh, talk, talk about the blurriness. Um, so if I click on this, I need to tell Redshift to override and enable this thing. And uh, here's its default setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and press, uh, turn on the, the, the render setup. <clears throat> and um, let me just make sure that it's actually, yeah, it's turned on, good. All right, so right now the, the settings for this are being controlled. You can see here the derive from camera. Really what this should say is derive from the Cinema 4D camera, <laughs> uh, the camera settings itself. And it's telling us that the focus distance and the COC radius, and the COC means the circles of confusion, which is, I'm not, again, not going to do a lesson on optics, but that's basically the depth of field setting. You can just think of this as the amount, right? So right now that's uh, set up through uh, a place we're going to go to in a second. I'm just going to change this. You can do it however you want, but what works best for me is to say, you know, I'm going to control the focus distance with the camera, and then I'm just going to use this slider here to control the blurriness, right? So I just turned this up a ton. Right, don't make it ridiculous. All right, so you can see the foreground is totally out of focus. And um, you can see back here, this actually looks pretty sharp or somewhat sharp, right? Um, given how much this is out of focus. So the focus distance is not correct, right? Now I could just go in here and say none and just say, you know, the focus distance, you can see how focus it out of focus it is now right so I could go through here and just kind of manually try to find that focus distance and, you know I'm not doing a bad job with it you know I can play a price is right game right try to do a little bit less a little bit more um, but let's just say that it's kind of hard to find it and you know exactly what you want to focus on in this so I'm going to change this back and say you know what I'm going to get the focus distance from the camera information and let me press pause on that for a second. <clears throat> so I have the camera selected. Um, there's this tag here, but um, if I look on the object settings for the camera itself, down here we have a focus distance, right? So this is this number is going back into the um, this bokeh, right? So it's um, uh, this is disabled, it's gray, so it's not set at uh, 1,027 uh, centimeters. It's actually set underneath the object here. We have um, 2,000 centimeters is where it is. But that's not accurate, right? Or that, Well, that's not what we want. It's focused back here. If I just click on the little eyedropper, I can come over into the scene and just click on an area. So this is kind of the eye area for my creature. I'm just going to click on it. And you can see the number has now changed over here from 2000 to 695. And uh, um, now I'll go back to my Redshift camera. And the focus distance now is, again, this is not the number it is. It's being the number, the focus distance is coming from here. So if you want to, you could like write that number down and, um, you know, put this to none and manually uh, set that in there, but for now I'll just leave that where it's at. I'm going to turn down my little um, radius uh, and so it's not quite out of focus. Um, <clears throat> if I were to control this through the camera, I would have to set the aperture. And I just, if you have a camera background and you understand what these numbers mean, um, feel free, you could use this if you wanted to get very uh, matchy with your real world uh, camera dynamics. Um, but I think for our purposes, if you don't have that experience, just using the redshift radius and thinking this is the amount of out of focus uh, is just fine. Um, I'm not going to get into all these other details. There's like the number of blades um, uh, and the angle, how these are set, and just controls kind of the shape of the, uh, 
when you get highlights that are out of focus, what those look like. Uh, I won't go too far into that, but uh, the main thing is just to get a little bit of this depth of field happening. Okay, so you can see it is focusing here uh, on the head. That's kind of nice. You know, if I want to tone this down, you know, I don't, it doesn't need to be out of control, but I just want that hint that this is photographic uh, of what I'm doing here. Okay, so that's thing number one. The uh, other thing is with the, the tag here, there are other things that I can turn on. There's um, lighting controls, I can load these weird kind of uh, uh, LUT, these LUT files that um, I can select different type of uh, film profiles that give it a certain style and look. Uh, the thing that's important to me here is the, the exposure. So again, I could do it right here within the, um, the tag, but then I, what I wanted to do is show that you also have access to those tag properties here within the Redshift render view. And again, this is why this, this view is uh, just fantastic. So if I click on the little gear, it's going to load all these things that I was looking at at the tag. It's going to load them over here. Um, so in this way, if I'm just doing a single image and I just want to play with the, the overall look, I can do it just from this uh, Place here. You can see that the bokeh thing, the, um, we made the changes here, and those have been loaded into this space. Well, the next one I want to look at is uh, maybe the, um, the exposure controls, right? So I'm going to turn that on. And uh, again, these are using uh, uh, camera settings, film uh, settings. So you might want to get, uh, if you're not familiar with those, maybe I would just uh, work with the um, the f-stop the lower this goes the brighter the scene's going to get the higher this gets the darker it's going to get um, so i'll just pull this back into something that i like so one thing that was bothering me it was i felt like it was just a little too dark and i wasn't getting some of those details it looks pretty good to me there are other things you can do in here like i could turn on the vignetting i would not mess with these i just uh, leave these alone um, has to do with kind of something called tone mapping. Uh, so I'll just leave those where they're at. Uh, you could play with something if you want to get into like a little special effect. I don't mind this sometimes. I'll just turn on the, um, the bloom, right? The, there's uh, just kind of like a um, uh, aberration. You know, this is like an artifact that you would have in the camera just from all that intense light. And I can turn that down, right? If I just maybe I just want a hint of it, right? I don't want too much. It's nice, you know, I can just turn this on and off. And it all just kind of pulls the, the image together in a nice way. All right, so like I said, there are other things that we can do in there. I'll just leave that where it's at. This looks pretty good to me. I've got a decent preview. I'm gonna turn off the preview and now just do that final render again. Right, so it builds its little uh, point cloud of the lighting information, and then it's going to run it around and, and do all the uh, um, the final buckets, right, the image quality. Um, again, I won't wait till this is done. I'm a little over my self-imposed 15-minute time limit, but I'll let it do a few boxes here. And when I'm done, I'm just going to say File and uh, Save um, and... Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, that should be pretty good. The, um, I guess one thing is this is going on with the buckets and I'm using depth of field. You know, when you add, you know, blurry reflections or depth of field, the, you have to do a lot of samples to smooth out that blurriness. So yeah, maybe you can see here in the back, it, it's hard to tell with your, by the video compression, it might look a little um, grainy. If you get to the point that uh, you are having issues where your image, the shadows are real soft, they look grainy, it's depth, you know, the blurriness is, is uh, grainy. Several ways to fix this. I think the simplest thing is if we just go into the Redshift under the, you know, it has the basic settings here. You can go from, um, the default for you all would be medium, and then um, you can move that up to high. I would not use very high. And then uh, we can turn on the denoise. And the denoise basically at the very end of the render um, will do a pass where it analyzes the image and it looks for graininess and, and we'll try to eliminate that. 
This isn't a magic wand. It won't fix severe graininess. Uh, you can't put the settings really low and have that just magically make your image look good. But if you get it 90% of the way there, this will take care of the rest of it um, without uh, creating really long render times. Okay, so already I'm pretty excited about this. There's a nice sharp detail, feels a little bit brighter. I still want some dark mystery, but you know, I still get to see parts of uh, my little model, my insect here. Um, and uh, I've minimized the background a little bit. The shapes, I think, relate to the shapes that are here, but they're not the focus, right? They're out of focus uh, in this render. And uh, I think this should be a pretty good uh, render. So maybe what I'll do is just pause and then come back when this is done. Okay, so we're back. Uh, final little um, view of the, the final render, right? Um, so it did a pretty good job. Um, there's maybe a few things. There's just a little bit, a few artifacts that happened from the um, uh, using the denoiser. Did an awesome job down here, but these are so far out of uh, focus. Sometimes that requires extra samples. <clears throat> we won't worry too much about that for this. Uh, and then again, once I have this final render, I would just do save image and uh, um, just give it a name. Um, you can use whatever format, I guess, um, you want. TIFF, PNG, JPEG. Um, I always use PNGs. It will save it as a 16-bit file, which is nice. Um, and if it has any transparency, but also not a uh, as large a file size if I, if I care about that. Um, so anyways, yeah, and for the assignment, you just need to upload one render that shows you completed that and then also the file that goes along with it. All right, happy rendering.